Hello, this is Kevin McCain again. This is for the Drawing 2 class, Drawing 2 Part A. So the next thing we're going to be drawing is this oil decanter. Okay, and the biggest thing that's going to be the challenge of this is a little bit of the neck, the ellipses on here, and the handle that goes through the middle of it. So let's go ahead and get my hand out of the way. But this handle that goes all the way through there. So you can hold this. So sometimes, um, we're drawing something, you know, take a look at it from all different angles so you can understand it better. You'll get a better drawing. Uh, but this, this thing is not symmetrical, this hole, and it also tapers in and so it changes the shape of this a bit as we draw it. So that's what's going to make this kind of funky. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing up here. And again, the, uh, I'm going to send you a picture of it. The picture you might have might be a little different than mine. But what we essentially have here is when I start with this, has, this really has a number six uh, sort of a, a gesture, you know, or the basic shape. When you say gesture, we're talking about the basic movement, the basic shape of the thing, so forth and so on. And if I if I drop a, a line from like the uh, from this from this neck point, if I drop this down. It's kind of just beyond the, the little tummy, and so I'm gonna. I'm gonna that's what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see where the tummy is in relation to the neck a little bit, and uh, and we're just so we're just gonna start with our basic um, basic ideas of this drawing. We have this also has a definite right and left side. It's rounded, but it has a front side versus a, uh, a front side versus the right side. And it is rounded, but we want to understand that this does have definite, two different planes. It's not completely round. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the basic shape of this. And the basic shape really is, uh, is a lot like, it's a teardrop uh, of sorts, or maybe it's an egg shape. I guess it would be closer to sort of an egg shape. If we did this, and the, the egg shape is a it's a common uh, design uh, that it's in a design all over the place. Um, in the Renaissance, the egg shape was considered, and when I say egg, I mean chicken's egg, duck egg, goose egg. That that shape was considered the most beautiful of all shapes, uh, and of course, you know, it also had the ideas of you know creation and all this good stuff going on. So it was considered a very important shape that contained a little something of the divine in it and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to bend this out a little bit. This is the neck coming out of the middle of this. That six was kind of like the back side, but I'm going to try to see if I can get a little bit more of the basic uh, shape, the center line, if you will. Uh, and then we, have, of course, are going to have. Now the center line is, is supposed to be like again this thin little line going all the way through the the middle of this thing. Uh, the neck and the ellipses are going to be 90 degrees to that line, so that will help me as I'm creating this drawing with this little neck for the oil decanter. Um, bring this down and I think we're going to move the, the egg shape down a little bit through here. Um, I'm going to look for where this this is attaching onto my shape so I'm going to look to where this uh, you know is is then attaching to that teardrop shape uh, which is then going to come up this is going to be the back side of the neck like so. All right, and so um, we're also going to be looking at um, but we're going to be also looking at um, this is this is this open enough this egg shape um, and, and all that good stuff so I, I think mine needs to I, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit seems like it need to be a little longer it also needs, it seems like it needs to 
to flare open just a bit uh, through here and you know through here and down here into the sort of the the, the bottom of the teardrop so to speak um, I think that's looking a little better um, as far as that goes but this is that there this needs to be a center line so this needs to be equal distance get that into there we go okay and the hardest part about this one is a couple things first off it's not completely symmetrical so there's a little bit it's a little bit wider at the front because again it's, it's not a cylinder it's a little asymmetrical so we're going to put a little belly on this thing uh or i might have to back into this because i lined this up with the belly but i pushed the belly out now the neck is too short so what i'll, I'll do instead is i'm going to go ahead and make this my belly and if that if that's the belly of it well then this part over here has to be a little flatter So there we go. This is now a little flatter. This has again the little tummy side. Um, that's the easy part <laughs> of this construction. But if we if we made this truly symmetrical, we'd be cutting off again a little bit of the belly over here. That sounds a little brutal, but you know. Anyway, so this is the basic shape of my oil decanter, right through here. Whoops. Through there. There we go. That's a little better. All right. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with the ellipses over here. So we have this center line and whenever we're drawing an ellipse we're looking for a major minor axis. Uh, the major minor axis on any ellipse is uh, there's a, a long side and then in the middle there's the short side and in the middle there and in there then we would have We would have our ellipse. Now this right here is not a good ellipse at all. So again, but we, we have this crosshair that we could use to then bring this ellipse. It needs to open up a little bit more through the curve. Through here. It needs to open up through the curve at the back. That's going to be looking a little better. Then again, we can use this to check it for symmetry right to left, top to bottom. Open up a little bit more through there. A little better ellipse. I still need to play with this side and this side. This is a little open. This side's a little pointed. So, you know, if we we can also check it for again for its symmetry, which it pushes out, which is probably why this one's pointing more and this one's curving more, is because it's not coming out to that symmetrical point out here. Yeah, there you go. So again, now we have an ellipse that's much more symmetrical. We still, I, I could, I could work through it with it, through here a little bit. Uh, as far as that goes, and you know, of course, we come in here with the eraser and trim this up. I'm using my finger just to kind of make it a little quicker. But we could go ahead and start to again get this ellipse cleaned up. But there's always a major minor axis to an ellipse. It seems like this is pushing out further than that other one. Well, that means that's asymmetrical. So we go over here. Oh, that needs to be at least that tall. So again, we go, okay, well, we just go ahead and this would become an arc. And this arc would then be, you know, starting there. And, and we'd then have a more symmetrical ellipse. But the idea is uh, on this, and again, this is kind of a little wonky over here on this side. Whoops, not really pointed. Something like that. But anyway, so major minor axis. Now we have something that's a lot more symmetrical through that ellipse. But again, we always have a major minor axis with an ellipse. Uh, the minor axis with the short side is always on the center line. So this is where we'd be our minor axis. And I'm going to take a look at this thing. I'm going to go ahead and 
check my ellipse in terms of its its width to its height. So I can check that, you know, what's the width to the height. And so we could then go ahead and and I did that with a <clears throat> pardon me, I, I did a um, same measure method or actually it's proportional measuring what I just did but I could then check the height to the width these would be my minor axis this is supposed to be the same distance from the center as this over here uh, this is supposed to be the same distance from the from this side as it is to this side so that's supposed to be the same and what we're going to find out is that we're going to have this ellipse that actually has an angle to it and that is correct if we don't have if we don't think of the major minor axis, if I put an ellipse on here that's just like that's like this, or even if I, you know, you need to know how to stand it up, how to, how this is supposed to stand, and so we need that the major minor axis through there. And by doing this, I can check it, you know, for its symmetry, right to left, top to bottom, uh, quadrant to quadrant, sort of thing. So again, here's our ellipse. All right. Like so. All right, so there's our, our major minor axis. That's the proper ellipse. All that good stuff. And then we can say, all right, well, there's a, there's a plastic ring, so it's basically a double ellipse. So if that means it's a double ellipse, what we're gonna do is that the ellipse has to come out uh, it, you know, because it's it's basically ellipse that's on top of another ellipse, and so this is I'm going to say, well, this is going to be decide the thickness. That's my minor axis, or pardon me, the the middle of the uh, of the ellipse. This moves out, and now this will be the middle of my second ellipse. Okay, and these major axes will come just straight out. And those two points, that's where, again, the major axis will touch. Okay, so um, that's at a slight angle. So again, that's my major axis point. Uh, and the same thing, the minor is going to come out, because this is still the minor axis, right? But the minor axis is going to be... And it would be that same distance. So if this is my, if I go through that point, and this is my, now my minor axis, right? And I could take that distance from the original axis. So this was the di original distance of the minor. This has now moved out. So we're going to have this minor axis is going to be here, and this minor axis be there. I got to move it onto the line though. So there we go. That's on the, uh, and from here we could develop our second ellipse. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try to get this to come down and around through there. Like so. Like so. And like so. So that's the plastic ring. There's also a smaller uh, metal ring that actually starts to hold the, so it's going to be a little smaller. It's going to come in a little bit and there's going to be the base of it. So it's going to it's going to be touching this ellipse right here, the front ellipse we just put on here. Because this is supposed to be flat. So it's going to be starting at that same, uh, that same place. Uh, and so, and since it's going to be a smaller ellipse, it's going to be the same sort of opening, but it's going to have to be smaller. So we're going to come in here, and again, make sure this is the same right to left. Whoa, what happened there? Huh. There we go. All right. 
Uh, so then we're gonna go ahead and go, all right. And we're gonna start doing our ellipse. Now, I'm gonna, this ellipse is gonna slam into that minor axis right there, which means it's gotta be the same on this side. So again, we're trying, and I'm gonna start to, this is actually starting to sit on top of another ellipse, the back part of this one. Uh, I just want to make sure I don't, you know, get too confused. If I need to, I could start erasing lines because I, I'm I'm looking through this like all of them are transparent, and again, that's going to give me a whole bunch of lines, and I want to make sure that doesn't throw me off here. Um, this looks like that needs to actually. open up there a little bit. All right, so that's the base. This is the base of this metal piece that holds the, so it comes out from that base a little bit. There's a thickness to it. So this is gonna come again, we're just gonna bring this straight out, straight out, and we're gonna project it as far as it needs to be. So there, let's say the thickness is from here to there, that's the thickness. Well, then I'm gonna put another line for another major axis. So again, this is it's the it's dealing with the ellipses and these major minor axes. It's the big problem, uh, not problem, but it's the challenge with this particular drawing is we really have to make sure that we're giving a nod to these major minor axes. And again, I have to make sure I don't get lost either because I've got a couple of things going on here. I'm being lost in all my lines. So here's what I'm going to do. All this stuff that I, I, you know, I can normally, you do that just for the drawing of the lips. So the ones that I can't see, I'm going to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and lighten up and get rid of the lines that I, that I can't, that I'm not, that are not going to be seen at this point. And then that will help me to clarify what's going on here with this one. Um, and so then that way I can go ahead and draw a better ellipse on the, on over here. Like so. So this is the, this is, again is this cap or ring or whatever that's got that holds the the center little hull I call it a straw but it's, I guess more of a small not really a funnel but uh, you know it's where on, on this on the top of here is where we're gonna have that that little hull bit of uh, tubing that's gonna allow the, the the oil to pour out of it okay so again, for that, for the little tube, I'm going to still going to have a you know a major axis. This is supposed to be flat on on this right here. So again, it should go ahead and you know let's make this thing symmetrical using the major minor axis. Okay, like so. This would be the opening for that little tube, short little straw, whatever, um, and so. This is getting the sides of it come where the major axis touches. That's going to be the side of this hollow little tube where the oil is going to come out of it. Uh, I'm going to put the length on there uh, as far as that goes. Okay, so we'll say this is the length again. This major axis should be par truly parallel to all these others. So, you know, make sure that we're doing that. There's a, this is sort of the drafting part of this, the draftsmanship. Uh, we would then want to make this ellipse about the same as that one, as far as that goes. So, okay, so that's now the end. Now there's a little flap on the end, uh, you know, but I could just leave this open if I like. If you're like, look, I don't want to do do the flap part. But if you do the flaps, well, there's a little cuff that comes around here, and the little cuff comes, you know, around and off that cuff. There's these little, you know, there's these little, um, there's a there's a little hinge. So these are, are these little flaps that come off this cuff. 
there's a flap there and a flap there and there's a little you know and then, and then the cap fits through that if I don't want to deal with all that well just leave it open act like there's not a cap on the end of this thing and and that's fine if I wanted to draw the cap well then uh, once again I'm gonna to have to come over here I'm gonna to have to again the, there's gonna be an ellipse with the cuff uh, and there's a you know I can see the the cuff over here and then so the thickness of the cuff which means we're gonna have major minor axes we're gonna then have the ellipse that's gonna go around here around that cuff the ellipse that's gonna go around here around that cuff uh, the cuff is a little bit bigger than the tube so um, this again would be, you know, the major axis would turn around through that point, around, turn around through that point. Uh, this would be a little thicker over here. Again, we could go ahead and develop this. We, you know, it's just going to be a, a series of ellipses. That's a little wider ellipse, so this cuff can, can sit on there uh, as far as that goes. like that and then off there we have again we have a little sort of a little ear that comes off that cuff so we have this little ear that comes off the cuff like so there's gonna be a slight thickness to that you know in the on the cuff there's like a hole cut through it so the flap has a little you know a little piece that fits through there so again we could go ahead and and, and put this together in terms of you know, this is going to go over there, and that goes there, and this is the other side of that, you know, little piece of metal that the little, the hinge joint is going to go through. Um, uh, these actually need to be uh, a little, these, this angle is not quite right on this, but in terms, these cups are look like they're kind of flipping up and at an angle, they need to be straight. So if they're gonna be straight, they're gonna we're gonna change the angle slightly. But then you'd have the little the little cap, you know, little, you know, it hinges there, it comes out, that attaches to the little cap, and the cap is a little bigger than this, and then we can put the cap on there. So again, and again, so we're just dealing with the ellipses. I'm trying to visualize and make sure it's lined up with these others, and that's now the little cap on the end of this thing. And again, whether we want to do that or not is up to you. The other hard part of this, the next hard part, isn't just, so the neck is certainly one of the challenges because of those ellipses. And we have to align the ellipses, they have to be 90 degrees to that center line, and then all these are going to be all in line with one another. And then the, the next thing that we're going to be doing is we've got the handle part. Now this handle part is what's the challenge with this because this handle goes around the corner and the hand, the thickness of the handle where you put your hand through gets a little skinnier. So what happens is this comes down into here as this, as this back handle is getting a little skinnier. So there's a little bit of this going on through through the back of this guy. Because again that's where the handle is turning the corner and it, it's, it's got a, a cutout. It gets skinnier because it's been cut so that it's a little softer through there. Um, as far as that goes. Now, and I'm just looking for lines. If this is the front, where do I, where's the front end? So I'm trying to get this lined up to, this is the front side going around the corner, and this is this side. So, again, it's not completely round. There's actually, it's, it's rounded. But there's actually, again, a front side and a right side and a left side and all this sort of stuff. And if I wanted to, I could actually create like a little cross section. Like if I cut the top off of this, what would that, what would that look like? That's a little bit too straight. We would, it would round through here a little bit, a little bit more. Probably open up a little bit through there. Hit this, round through. But um, we could do like a little cross section if we wanted to. And again, it's, it's, it's us trying to use our imagination as if we were kind of wrapping a ribbon around this. Uh, to help visualize what what's going on back there, this thing get come around here, gets a little bit skinnier, comes around there, whatever. Um, but now we've got to deal with the opening here, where you actually put your hand. So the thing is, is that this is rounding out. 
So we got a surface here that's bulging outward. And then we also have that, so this is bulging outward here. We also have that this is, this is smaller here because this is a, a, an ellipse wrapping on this round surface and this surface is bulging. So as this ellipse, if I've got an ellipse on a, on a round surface like this that is continuing to get wider at the bottom, you're going to end up with an ellipse that starts to, to do something a little wild where it starts to pick up some of the curvature and you would end up, now this needs to come back, you end up with an, an ellipse that starts to open up a little bit. So it starts to look a little bit like this. So there's some of that going on on this handle. Plus, the handle is cut in, so to make it a little skinnier, so it's cut in. So not only is that would be if it's flat, but if it's cut in, what is that going to do? That means that this is then going to come back like this as, as you're cutting away more of that. So you get this very, sort of a funky sort of a you know look to this to this handle so um that's what we're gonna we're gonna try to try deal with is the fact that this um has this this unusual little shape because this is basically a, a shape that's wrapped around a, an object that's continuing to bulge plus it's cut at the back and all these things are creating for us an unusual type of shape to this handle that we have to be aware of this is going through here like this so this is this is literally wrapping onto a surface that is bulging, and so it, it warps it. It's basically all we're doing is how do we deal with the warp? Um, so I'm going to take my my uh, take my eye to focus so I can see the you know focus on the basic shape and not get distracted by lots of little superfluous details, if you will. And I can really start to see that there again. There's this. This is getting wider at the bottom, so this is a little smaller up here, getting wider here. So that's the basic shape on the front side, but then again, it's cutting and getting skinnier as it comes around. So that's that's the trick with this guy. And so there's this edge here that then comes around, and again, where that's cutting, and it's kind of this edge is coming a little bit in front of this as this edge is then coming back right and so that's going to give that sort of that feel again where this is actually this needs to open up even more because you know this actually this cut starts to take over as this there's still a little bit of the bulge as this is then starting to go behind and again you're just going to want to try to take a look at this and draw it as accurately as you can possibly do it but i want you just to be aware of what's happening a lot of times we're not thinking enough about what's 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 happening with the object so this is coming in because it's getting cut and, and, and skinnied up so you can put your hand through the back of it. Okay, and so again, what, what, what I can see over here kind of looks sort of like a bean shape. Um, now I don't think I stretched this enough, truth be told. This actually needs to come up here probably a little bit higher as far as that goes. This is a little bit too pointed though. It needs to, it needs to round. There we go. Through there like that. Um, this needs to stretch down here a little bit more. So the, the handle's too small. I don't think we get a hand through there. That would be an issue. Okay. As this opens up. Okay. And the handle's actually sort of if you can look inside here, because of the fact that the way it's opening, it creates uh, this little tube going to the other side. It, it's gonna, it kind of wraps like that. It's, it, you know, it, 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 there's a little rise in it. If if we look at this thing, there's a little bit of a rise here, and this this is this is dished this way. This is dished that way, you know. So again, there's. Um, something to, to look for is so again the other thing is again how this how this goes up in here is important uh, this kind of comes down and then comes back up um, and this is just sort of the, the middle line I'm thinking of it like if I was a little ant crawling into there now sometimes you'll see the opposite side so um, you know so um, you're gonna want to take a look at that again if I if I have both eyes open well you don't have to worry about this if you have a photograph but if you're actually sitting here 
and you have both eyes open, you have two different views of this object, and so you have to decide which one am I doing, the, the view from the right or the view from the left, because they're slightly different. But, again, if I was trying to, you know, get this to, you know, sort of echo what I'm actually seeing, um, this is going to come in here, you know, there, and then that's going to stretch, and so forth and so on. But, I could go ahead and try to visualize, you know, sort of, because there's a, does, I'm seeing this as a, as a particular angle. This is, again, not perfectly round, so it's, I could fit this in a box. It's a rounded box, so I'm trying to view, you know, sort of the handle on the opposite side, if you will. But, if this is the opposite side, that means this piece that I've got here is, is, is cut, there's, it's too, I'm seeing too much of it. But the idea is, I'm going to see a little bit of that. So we're not going to stress that too much, but I can see the opening a little bit on the other side. And the, in the middle, uh, let's just assume that this is down here. In the middle, again, there's a little bit of a rise. So what happens is sometimes you'll see sort of a, a soft edge, and this edge is where it's the highest part of this comes up and merges there. And then we actually see a little bit of the back edge, which is lower. You know what I'm saying? Because this is coming up to that high point and then it go, it, it, it's going to fold over. But sometimes we'll catch this little ridge and we're like, what is that about? It's just because, again, this is folding up and that's that edge of that going up the hill. That's the, this is the other side of the hill. And this is where we can start to see a little bit of the ridge line of that hill. And the only reason we can see this is because we're above it. You know, if we were below it, we wouldn't see, we wouldn't see the back side. Um, but that's uh, that's gonna that that's the biggest issue is this little hole. Now I don't want people to go nuts on this thing. I just want you to go ahead and try to have it open your eyes and try to make better observations based on what we're actually seeing instead of what we think we're seeing. Because a lot of times we'll make visual assumptions, and it's the visual assumptions that kill us. You know, where we don't really understand it, and so we don't really do it right, and that's that's where we get into trouble. All right. But this right here is looking pretty good. Again, this I haven't finished this out. This is just understanding the basic structure. And then I put on my, my beautiful lines and really, really draw this out um, and to, to make people go, ooh, looky there. So this is still a rough drawing, but I want you to try to draw the oil decanter. Do your very best on it. And you guys have yourselves a great day.